Okay, so why do I bring this up? So the things that I also brought up diffusion as well. So do you have special types of, I did mention ion channels and how they allow ions to travel across the plasma membrane. Now what we have here is a voltage gated ion channel. So right now it's closed, it's not open, no ions can pass through it. Now the thing is that voltage gated ion channels, they're kind of like electronic locks or sometimes like I like to liken them like combination locks. So you have to like dial it to the right number for it to open. So voltage gated ion channels, what happens is that when the environment, again, both cations and anions, so we have all these ions in the cytoplasm and extracellular fluid. But sometimes when these the balance shifts from like maybe it's really negative inside of a cell, but all of a sudden becomes very positive, this may cause these channels to open. And especially for the sodium gated ion channels, yeah, this causes it to open. So now we have an ion channel that's open due to some change in the ion balance and the voltage between these two sides of the cell or plasma membrane. Now we have sodium. And remember, is there more sodium outside of a cell or inside of a cell at rest? Well, again, that whole ocean and banana analogy. So there's more sodium on the outside extracellular fluid than there is inside of a cell. So the thing is that if you have all that sodium on the outside and relatively less on the inside, which way is going to diffuse or which way is the sodium going to diffuse? Is it going to go from the inside out or outside in? So this is where you have to remember that diffusion moves from high concentrations to low concentrations. So <coughs> remember that the extracellular fluid has more sodium on the outside at rest, but less on the inside. So it's going to move from high concentrations to the in low concentration over here. So this is why, and this is actually, we're gonna cover more about this next on Friday. But the thing is that this is why you have to understand both where you find higher concentrations or lower or concentrations. Oh, thank you, sorry about that. And then also, you have to understand diffusion. If you don't understand diffusion, you'll be like, okay, are so when these channels open, is sodium flowing out or is it flowing in? But by knowing that you start off with higher on the outside, when these channels open, you know by diffusion it's going to move inside. Now, if you're some of you who have more uh, advanced classes, you might know be thinking about what about electrical gradient? I think. At this point, it's easier just to think about concentration differences and which has higher on the outside and inside than it is to talk about both the concentration and electrical at the same time, especially since I think a lot of people haven't had physics yet or chemistry, so don't worry too much about it. But if you're going to add more advanced classes, they might tell, teach you about that. Okay, so this is why you have to talk about this, and this is why sodium is moving in. It's not due to active transport. It's due to some ion channel that's triggered by voltage. It's a voltage gated ion channel. Basically an ion channel that opens in response to some difference in the electricity between two sides of a membrane. So when these channels open, this allows sodium to flow in. Now you know why sodium flows in because again, you start out with more sodium on the outside, you open the channels up and sodium just flows in due to the diffusion. And then we have these action potentials and sodium is doing the same thing here. Open this channel, just by diffusion, sodium moves in and this triggers these action potentials. Now, how does sodium go from here, rushing in from the outside towards the inside, and then causing all these action potentials in these cells? And the thing is that at the axon hillock, what we have here, you have actually all these sodium ion channels. So the thing is that when the sodium ion channel, you have all these sodium ions moving in, this causes this part to actually become positive. So the thing is that when this part over here becomes positive, this actually sends a little electrochem... Uh, this is a change in voltage. This change in voltage triggers the opening of the next channel. And what happens is you kind of have a domino effect. As the voltage changes along these channels, they open any channels that are next to them. So this is how this movement of sodium triggers all these channels to open and also carries the signals from that axon hillock all the way down the length of an axon. Now let's see, so neurons, let's, uh, so let's talk about them in general. I think they're, a common th saying is that neurons live as long as you do. And this is actually under research and debate, like, okay, and why is it under research and debate? 
like some I think some sources say like you're born with all the neurons you'll ever have, and any neurons you lose along the way, that's it. Or you can, there's no way you can actually generate new new neurons. That was kind of like the old way of thinking, but now they're saying like, hey, is it possible that some neurons do regenerate, or that if you lose the neurons, is that it, or is there some way to replace them? But the thing is that the way that this bold statement probably originated from is that most neurons are irreplaceable, and it, there are exceptions like the neuron, some of the neurons, olfactory neurons in your nose. Yeah, they actually do regenerate. So these that's an example of neuronal re regeneration. But like the neurons in your brain, the neurons in your spinal cord, these tend, once they die, they tend not to be, yeah, it's not able to, you can't really regenerate them or repair them with current technology. But this is also why stem cells are a high, hot topic in neurosciences, because, in neuroscience, because again, since neurons are difficult to replace, what if there was a way to replace them? And this is why, like, or if someone has like a spinal cord injury or a cervical injury or a brain injury, that's why it's often life-changing because if the neurons are irreplaceable, you can't repair that damage that's being done to their central nervous system or spinal cord or sometimes even the peripheral nervous system. Like if you damage some of your peripheral nerves, that can permanently impact the way you feel that, that part of your body or control that part of the body. So the thing is that neurons, they are difficult to replace. And the thing about neurons is that they need a lot of energy. The thing is that your brain is about 2% of your body mass. But compared to the rest of your body, do all of the cells in your body consume the same amount of energy? The thing is that the brain is about 20% of your basal metabolic rate. So, so you're always consuming calories, even if you're not working out. So the thing is that your brain is using up a lot of that energy that you're using, you know, like when you're sitting right now, like in your at wherever you are right now, your brain is using about 20% of the energy you're consuming right now. It's a very energy hog. So what I'm getting at is that neurons, they're difficult to replace and they require a lot of energy. 